Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Touch Tank Tuesday. My name is Olivia and I am the public educator here at the Deep Bay Marine Field Station. And I'm very excited to talk to you today about a special critter that I actually just collected today during our low tide. Well, it's almost low tide, but there's enough of the beach showing that I can go out and collect. So uh, the Deep Bay Marine Field Station is a research and education facility that is part of Vancouver Island University. And what we do here is we focus on education, but we also focus on shellfish and shellfish aquaculture, trying to create uh, more sustainable uh, research towards uh, shellfish and their production, kind of to help with the process of, of growing shellfish uh, here in Bain Sound. Uh, and so we're located here on Vancouver Island, uh, and the station itself is on Deep Bay, <laughs> from the name. Uh, okay, well, let's get started. If you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to put them into the chat box. Hopefully I'll be able to see them. Right now we're streaming across platforms, so hopefully I can see everything that uh, you're asking and anything that you're commenting, and I'll do my best to answer. Ah, oh, hi Lisa, welcome. Um, and so I'll do my best to answer any of your questions as we go along if I don't get the chance to answer them or, uh, yeah, uh, if I don't get the chance to answer them or if uh, maybe I don't know the answer because although I try, I'm not uh, an expert on everything, uh, then I'll come back afterwards and I'll try and reply to your uh, question or comment uh, after our live video. But do feel free to comment and ask your questions as we go along. So today we'll be talking about limpets. So limpets are a very interesting creature. Uh, I have two limpets to show you today. And uh, I'll get into a little bit about the species, but I'll talk really about the group in general because I'm not really quite sure what these limpets are that I've brought for you today. Um, they're really hard to identify because they have algae growing on them. And that happens a lot. So uh, one of these is from our touch tank and this limpet, it's quite small, has algae growing all over it. So it's hard to see uh, the different colors that are on its shell. Um, and I'll give you a little glimpse here. I'm gonna pull this rock up to what the limpet looks like. Now, this is a barnacle and right beside it here is a limpet and I'll turn it. It's this tiny little cone. So limpets are uh, basically a group of sea snails. And we've talked about sea snails before. Uh, maybe you'll remember. If you don't remember you or you didn't catch that episode, you can go to our Facebook page. And on our Facebook page, you'll be able to see uh, our previous session on snails. And we talked about uh, the hairy Oregon triton, which is a predatory snail. So I did bring a predatory snail for you to see and we can compare them. So this, I believe, is a whelk. Um, so it's not as big as the triton that we saw before, uh, but I'll be able to give you a pretty good idea of how they're different and how they're the same. Okay, first, like every week, I will talk about the group. We need to understand where this limpet falls in the huge tree of life. So something called phylogeny. So we'll go through what group the limpet is in. So first it's in that big group mollusca, and that's the phylum. So remember mollusks are basically invertebrates that have squishy bodies that are inside a shell. So that shell helps protect them. If you think about it, uh, we've talked about scallops, uh, oysters, um, sea snails. <laughs> so basically anything in that group, that big phylum mollusca. And then the smaller group, gastropoda. So, gastropods, um, we would, from the mollusk group, we would put the oysters and scallops as bivalves. So those, remember, those are two shells together. So those go off, but gastropoda, hmm, sea snails only have one shell. So gastropods would have that one shell rather than two. Uh, and it's a really, really big group. And remember in gastropoda, there would be nudibranchs. We've talked about nudibranchs before. Ooh, hi, Fred and Dolores, welcome. Uh, so we've talked about nudibranchs before. We've talked about sea snails before. Those are in gastropoda. 
And then we have a smaller group, which is the family, and it's Patellidae. So Patellidae is where you are going to find all of the limpets. And limpets are basically a sea snail that has a cone shell. So Patellidae is like a dish. So it's dish shaped. So that shell is like a dish that has some really, really cool functions. So it really helps the limpet uh, where it lives. Um, and so limpet is actually more of a common name. So although true limpets are in Patellidae, that family, we can call basically any sea snail that has this cone shaped, uh, no spiral, just a simple cone shell, they call them limpets, although they might be not be true limpets. Um, so it's more common and not exactly because of maybe the family they come from or their relationship with each other, it's more of how they look but true limpets are patellidae in that family. And so they live all in the intertidal zone. So true limpets tend to be on rocks. So they'll live in a very rocky area along the shore, and that's because of how they live. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So they have adapted, they have this amazing adaptation to their environment to help them survive. So they live all in that intertidal zone, and some limpets actually live on uh, sea, uh, seagrass, so eelgrass. So you would actually see them stuck to the grass, just like maybe a snail might be stuck to a blade of grass uh, in uh, your garden or on your lawn. It's the same when you go under the water to look at these limpets. And so I think limpets are so cool because they really just look like tiny rocks. So if you go out into the intertidal zone, maybe you won't notice or you won't see them, but if you look really hard, you might be able to find them. And they look a lot like barnacles. And I do have a barnacle here to show you to kind of compare the limpet and the barnacle. So uh, before we talk about all of the bits and pieces <laughs> and the body parts of this amazing limpet, uh, I will show it to you. So. Just a second, I don't have my um, dissection microscope today, which is okay, because we can get nice and close to the limpet. So I'll pull it out of the water here, and you can see it. So the barnacle is in the background, so this is the barnacle, and then this here is the limpet. And right there, that cone. And so they're amazing because they can, they can suction themselves to a surface. So let's think about it. When the tide goes out in the intertidal zone, these snails are left out in the open air. But their shell is amazing because what it does is it acts like a cup of water. So their shell, they use muscle, their muscle and their mucus to, to seal their, their shell off. So they seal it off and they keep that water on the inside so that their mushy body is on the inside and they keep all the water in there. And what that does is it helps keep their body wet. And they need their body to be wet because of their gills. So remember with snails, they have only one set of gills on one side of their body. Well, that needs to stay moist, <laughs> a little bit wet. I know people don't really like that word, but <laughs> they need it to be a little bit wet uh, so that they can continue to breathe. And so Actually, as you get farther away from water, so the longer a limpet might stay out of water, the bigger its shell is. So it depends on the species where it lives in the intertidal zone, and therefore how long it actually spends outside of the water. So here is that limpet. And what I'll do is I will try and pick it up for you. See how amazing it is? You actually cannot move this limpet. I'm trying really hard. So this limpet is completely suctioned on. So if you think about it, this is a response to predators. So it helps it survive when maybe uh, predators just like us, oh, there you go, predators just like us wanna take it off of a rock. So it helps hold it down. And it also helps it survive out of water. Another thing it helps is if, let's say a predatory snail, just like this, this here is a predatory snail. Um, and you can see, remember, they have something called an operculum. And that operculum seals the shell, and it's in there. It's a piece of shell that seals it when it comes out of water to keep the water in. 
limpets don't have that. They use the rock. So if, uh, let's say if the limpet lived in the intertidal zone and there were lots of waves, but it was like this predatory snail, it would have to release itself from the rock and then it might get damaged or it might float away in the tide or in the waves. So what the limpet does instead is it holds onto the rock and it uses the rock not only to keep it there, but to help seal that water in. So it's the shape of it also helps if this whelk decided that it wanted to eat the limpet. Uh, what happens is that the limpet will actually trap the snail. As the snail comes with its foot, the shell will actually trap its foot under the edge and it will stop it from getting in. So it helps it from not being eaten by those predatory snails. So it is an amazing cone-shaped shell that really helps it to live in its environment. And hopefully you can see that there. Um, as we go along, if anyone you have questions about this, do let me know. Um, oh, as you can see, this limpet has actually, every time I look at them there, they've moved because this limpet has moved across the dish. And let's see if I can get it zoomed in. You might be able to see it here on this side. Um, so this limpet, uh, it moves. And the way that it moves, oh, here we go. The way it moves is, oh, and it's moving now for us. Watch it go. It is actually quite fast. So it moves very fast. It has a pedal. And the pedal is that big mass of muscle that's under the shell. And what happens is the muscle will contract and it will release and sort of vibrate as it moves along the substrate. And as it moves along, it uses its teeth to chew up all of the algae it can find. And so the way it uses its teeth is the same as that predatory snail that we saw. It uses its teeth um, on something called a radula. So it has a radula. And this radula is this big ribbon, almost like a conveyor belt of tiny teeth. And these tiny teeth are made of chitin. And if you remember our last session, ooh, there. So you can see all of that algae that's grown on the limpet. Oh, it's amazing. Um, so um, it uses its teeth, this chitin. Remember when we talked about the crab, we had the beautiful, graceful crab in last week. Um, it's, remember, its exoskeleton is made of chitin. So the, the teeth of this snail is made out of chitin and is a really, really hard. So the, they're able to scrape the algae off of all the surfaces they can find. And so they'll scrape that algae and look at this now. Ah, it's like it knew. So we can see at the bottom here. So this is under the shell. You can see that big white petal. Okay, let's see if we can focus this. Uh, maybe it'll focus. Um, but uh, as it goes, it scrapes the algae. And what's amazing about limpets is that it can, what it does is it scrapes with its razor sharp teeth. Let's see if I can get this to focus. It scrapes with its razor sharp teeth and maybe we can see it here. Oh, almost. Ah, there we go. It's grace with its ray. Oh, look at the pedal moving. It's vibrating. So the muscle contractions are going through it and it's moving. And then you can see its mouth is at the bottom here. So that's where the radula is. And then look at the tentacles coming out. It has two, just like those rhinophores, two tentacles that are used for sensing. Ah, it's so cool. Now it's going away. I'm so glad that was able to focus. And so what's amazing, oh, look at it go. And you can see it separated from its shell there. <laughs> so uh, as the teeth get dull, and this can happen every 12 to 48 hours, the teeth become dull. And maybe it can't scrape as much as it should. Um, and so what happens is those teeth get dull and then they shed them and they grow new teeth. So every 48 hours, which is a really short period of time, these limpets shed their teeth and grow new ones. So they have a conveyor belt of teeth that basically as the new ones, um, as the old ones wear down, they discard them and the new ones come forward. And so they have many, many rows. And this is actually really fast. I'm surprised how fast this limpet is moving. Um, 
So it's moving across there. So the radula is absolutely amazing because of the strength of the teeth. And so they are amazing cleaners. So one thing that's amazing, what's very cool about these uh, limpets is that some scientists have been thinking about using them for biofouling and helping to remove biofoul. So what biofoul is, is a really big problem actually with marine environments. Maybe you've seen it in a marina. Yeah, it's moving really fast, Lisa. Um, so maybe you've seen it in a marina or if you've ever put something into the ocean and you brought it out, it's covered in algae, it's covered in other organisms and it really hurts the material. So scientists have been looking at using limpets to actually clean things. So they could take those limpets and they could put it on different structures that might go into the water. And if they put the limpet there, it actually cleans it all out really quickly. So they had talked about, oh, and it's going under this, the predatory snail now. Oh, it's moving it. Um, so what scientists have been looking at is how well limpets might clean these materials and if they should use them or attach them to help stop um, things from degrading. So breaking and wearing down over time in the ocean because of biofouling. So that's an amazing use. And I really hope that they continue looking at that. Does anyone have any questions so far about the limpet? I know it's, it's absolutely amazing how something so tiny can have such a huge impact on the environment, an amazing adaptation to the intertidal zone and have just so much packed into such a tiny shell. So just like other uh, snails, it has this mouth, so the radula, it has that pedal foot, and it has so many organs. It has a circulatory system, so it has a heart, uh, it has a gill, it has a stomach, and it even has a very rudimentary nervous system. So it has a simple nervous system. And those tentacles are used for sensing its environment. Um, and hopefully it'll stick them out again so we can see them. Actually, what I'll do is I'll turn this around so you can see underneath it again. There we go. Oh, look at that. It has its tentacles out. So it has two tentacles. And there they are as it moves. This is cool. Um, yeah, so lifespan. I actually, I think it should be similar to other snails. I'm not sure how long they live. Um, so I would say a couple years, I wouldn't go probably past five, but I'll look that up afterwards. It's a great question. Um, and here I'll pop that up. So how do they reproduce? Do they lay eggs? So, uh, Lisa asks whether they lay eggs and they do. So what's interesting is that they produce sperm that, oh, wow that sperm uh, is sent into their kidneys before it's released, which is kind of weird. They have one, their right kidney. Um, and then eggs are fertilized um, out uh, inside and then sent out into the water. And so they will actually be free floating larvae for a long period of time. Uh, they'll be floating around in the ocean currents before they actually settle. And that seems to be a really common strategy by a lot of the invertebrates that we've seen so far. Huh. That's a really great question. Thank you. Okay, this is a perfect view. Look at this. Look at this limpet. So perfect view. You can see under the shell. You can see those two tentacles. You can see the mouth and you can see that pedal foot. And so that's that big massive muscle that really does most of the work. And it's moving. So it's cleaning. It's cleaning this dish, which is good. It's a little bit uh, murky on the outside. So Thank you, Limpet, for cleaning this dish. Does the shell grow with them? Yes, it does. Uh, great question. So um, the shell will continue to grow with them. Um, the shell is made out of calcium carbonate, just like uh, most of these mollusks that we've seen. And so the, I've seen the limpets get to a couple centimeters. Uh, we have a couple of them in our touch tanks. But as they get bigger, they get stronger. So they're actually even harder to pull off of the surface. So although I tried to pull off maybe seven different limpets, I only got two for you to see today. So they are so strong and I didn't want to break their shell. I'm sure I could try and get them off, uh, but that would hurt them and I didn't want to do that. So we just have the two, but this one here is so active. 
Um, and the way that they replenish their teeth, uh, so they grow them back, but they do something called biomineralization. And so it actually attracts, they attract these minerals out of the environment to create a coating on their teeth. And that's why they're so strong. And they're well known for actually being one of the most strong materials in the world. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I'm surprised at, uh, at how well we can see the limpet today. Oh, and there it's tentacles coming out again. And it has the other one on the other side, but it seems to be tucked in. Wow. And so what it's doing right now is feeding. So the teeth are so tiny. So it must have hundreds of tiny little chitin teeth. And so these teeth are so tiny that we can't see them. But if we were to make our touch tanks out of plastic, you would be able to see all of the little tiny scratches that the radula makes. Luckily with the glass, it helps. <laughs> um, or if it was um, fiberglass, fiberglass helps resist that. But they are so good. Um, no, so uh, from what I've read, Lisa's asked about eyes. From what I've read, they don't have eyes like our traditional snails that we would talk about. Um, so with snails that are terrestrial, they would have these um, tentacles that we call rhinophores. Those rhinophores would lead to eyes on the ends of the stalk. But um, they have sensory organs, but they don't have eyes on the ends of their tentacles. And this is a really interesting thing um, that they must have lost or not developed throughout history. Hi, James, welcome. Uh, so they might not have developed those over time. So it's, uh, it's really quite interesting. That's at least what I read. Um, which is amazing. And you can see on the end of those tentacles, we don't see any eyes. Like if you looked at a snail in your garden, there are tiny round balls at the end of their eye, of their rhinophores, um, or at least the end of those tentacles. So uh, these ones don't seem to have that, uh, but look at it going. It's actually so mesmerizing to watch. And now what I'm seeing right now are uh, tiny little projections on the end of the shell uh, all the way around it. I don't know what those are. Um, if anyone else knows, please tell me. Um, they almost look like little cilia, but I don't actually know. Oh, um, so Michael has asked if they'll come off by touching them with a sea star, uh, with the sea stars, maybe their, their um, feet. Oh, I don't know. I haven't tried. Actually, that's a that's a good idea. I will try it maybe with one of our um, leather stars. Uh, so uh, Michael was just sharing a technique for trying to get them off of a surface. I haven't tried that. That's really cool. I will give it a try and let you know how it goes. Uh, and you can see it's coming up to the surface of the water. Let's see if it decides to continue. Oh, yeah. So it's continuing. And so what's happening right now is mucus is being um, left behind. We don't really see it right now, but what is happening is mucus is being left behind. That mucus along with that foot going all the way, as you can see it undulating, so vibrating. Um, so those are sealing off this cup-shaped, like cone-shaped shell. And you can kind of see it uh, collecting around the edges. That's, that must be the mucus collecting around the edges. Um, and so that seals off the shell to keep the gills wet. So it keeps water in the cup, basically that cupped shell. Oh, and it's leaving, it is so cool. I agree, Lisa. So here it is, let's see if we can focus again. Um, and I don't know which species this is from my guide of the Pacific Northwest. There are about 19 species of limpets, true limpets that are listed. Um, there are other sea snails that have this cone-shaped shell as well that aren't true limpets, but um, look similar and might be called commonly, we might call them limpets. Okay, well, I'm not able to focus right now. It does not want to focus, but that's okay. Okay, does anyone have any more questions about the limpets? I've actually been absolutely amazed with how um, how much is in and how, how big of an impact these limpets have on their environment and um, what kind of adaptations they've uh, 
created over evolutionary history. It's absolutely amazing for such a tiny creature that has such a simple body. Um, well, uh, I don't see any questions now, but if any of you have more questions, please feel free to comment. Uh, let me know if there's something else that you would like to learn, maybe in next week's session. Um, I will do my best. I'm going to try today to go find some sand dollars. So hopefully I will have some sand dollars for you. They're really hard to keep alive in captivity. So uh, hopefully I'll have some sand dollars for you. I will at least have some shells, if not. Um, and so hopefully we'll have those for next week. If you have any other uh, invertebrates that you would like to see, let me know and I'll do my best to either go collect them or maybe we have them in the touch tanks. Uh, but I'm happy to share with you uh, about them. So next week, uh, we should be live again uh, next week at 12.30 p.m. PST. And I really hope uh, that you'll join us for that. Uh, great. Uh, enjoy your long weekend. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Lisa. Okay, I will see you next time. Goodbye.